Welcome to The Hill's Coronavirus Report. I'm Steve Clemens, Editor-at-Large of The Hill. Each day we are interviewing consequential leaders and innovators in the battle against the coronavirus. Yesterday, Dr. Anthony Fauci, a key figure in the White House Coronavirus Task Force, testified remotely before the Senate while being self-quarantined because of possible exposure to coronavirus in the White House. Dr. Fauci has consistently warned against states opening up too quickly. Many have said that instead of addressing this virus as a public health crisis, many have politicized COVID-19. As Congress debates stimulus measures with a fair amount of partisan rhetoric attached and some protesters marching on some state capitals, urging governors to open up, politics do seem to be in play. In the midst of all this, some strong words have come from a member of President Trump's own party. Michael Steele has said the White House isn't treating the pandemic as a health issue. Instead, my my next guest says it's become a red versus blue narrative. And on the issue of reopening America, Steele has offered the colorful salute to Field of Dreams, build it, and they may not come. Joining me now is Michael Steele, former Republican National Committee Chair. He's also former Lieutenant Governor for the great state of Maryland. Welcome, Michael. Great to see you. I should add, the last time I think I saw you on the street, I gave you a big bear hug. Yeah, uh, and I think that's the last hug I gave anybody. Uh, so, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> so anyway, um, thanks for joining us, and and I Good guess I really you. want to get into it. I mean, you have not been where your party largely has been, although there have been some folks uh, in the Republican Party that have been uh, saying we need to open up America, but open it up smartly, safely. We can't sacrifice public health. But tell me what your biggest concerns are right now with the direction the White House is going regarding op- reopening the economy. Well, I, I think the largest concern is the rush to make this something that it is not, and that is putting this and shoving it into a political context. Yes, we have a national election coming up in November, and we are you know, in the midst of a primary season that's had its fits and starts. But the reality of it is 80,000 Americans are dead. Uh, well over a million uh, are, have suffered with this virus, and we still don't have adequate, adequate testing in place uh, across the country. 2% of the American population has been tested. So the narrative, again, put into a political uh, context um, is what we hear out of out of the White House is, oh, you know, anybody who wants a test can get a test. No, that's not true. You can only get a test under these guidelines is if you're sick or 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 suffering from uh, some form of the virus, you, you have evidence of that. Um, but if you wanted to leave your home and go to uh, a medical space to get a test to uh, you know because you have concerns, that's not that's not the reality. And so keeping it real is important uh, in my from my perspective, uh, particularly when others seem to be wanting to contextualize this uh, around how well the president is doing or not doing versus how well the American people are doing. Right. So what's going on? You know these circles. What's going on around the president? You know, Tom Bossert was one of my interviewees on this show, Mm -hmm. was the president's former Homeland Security Advisor. And Tom very dramatically said, we need to start testing the well, not the ill. We know the ill are ill. They should be quarantined. We need to test the well, those people that are asymptomatic. That seems to me to be a powerful message. Tom Bossert is close to those crowd. What's happening inside the network of people around the president that some simple message like that isn't penetrating? Well, not only is it a powerful message, it is a correct message because this is about uh, how we go about testing the well. Uh, Remember, you're talking about a virus with a two week uh, gestation period, a window in which over those 14 days, you can infect a number of people. Um, You may not show symptoms, but you are highly infectious. You you can pass it on. Um, So to be able to test people to to see exactly how this body, how this uh, virus is affecting the body and how it is mutating, uh, as we're beginning to see, as scientists are beginning to speak to, that it is changing uh, in given the environment that it is in. That is important information to get in front of the president. The problem is the president has his own mind uh, of what this is and what it isn't and how it is functioning and how it is not functioning. Um, That goes beyond the science. Remember, this is the guy who somehow either read or was told uh, uh, something about disinfectants. And the next thing we know, the president is out there saying, yeah, we could probably inject people with disinfectant to deal with this. 
So if that's the mindset you're working with, uh, when others come to the table with reasonable science and reasonable approaches, the president is not necessarily going to be inclined to to follow that because you know it lends itself more to the outrageous than the normal, right. and and that's that's a competing interest inside this White House right now, and it shouldn't be. It I'm going to tr- I'm going to try and ask this with a straight face, but since you mentioned um, the detergents. Um, Imagine you were chairman of the Republican National Committee today. I'm trying to understand how much latitude folks that are running political parties today should be given in you know, overlooking some of these lapses. You know, if, if, if you were there today and the president said, hey, all we need is a little bit of Lysol and Clorox, and you were in a position of responsibility in the party, how do you navigate that? I mean, you're a political animal. How do you navigate that? Well, yeah, not easily. Not easily, because my initial response would be, oh, hell no, I'm not going out <laughs> supporting that. I'm not going to advise that. I'm not even going to go out and give credence to it. So there would be an in- instantly a, a loggerhead uh, confrontation between the RNC that I ran and the White House that put something like that out on the street. Um, so, but it also speaks to the challenge that the current chairwoman has. Um, she, uh, you know, her organization has been subsumed by the White House political operations and now uh, the presidential campaign. So she has no latitude. Hmm. Uh, Ms. Romney is not going to come out, uh, McDaniels, because she's not allowed to use Romney, um, is not going to come out and say um, uh, what she believes um, in a political context uh, is good versus bad advice to the American people. She's going to take her marching orders from the White House, from the president's lead, and she's going to stick very closely to that. Remember, during the impeachment trial, she had to go out and condemn her own uncle um, mm. because that was the marching order from the White House. Uh, so she was not going to you know, give Mitt Romney the latitude that any other senator would have um, you know, in, in that situation to follow his own course. She hewed very much to the line and, 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 and stayed true to that. And that would be the case here. It's unfortunate, but it's also part of the, real, the political reality for a party when the president is the titular head of your party. So that's, the, that's their truth, and they're going to speak to whatever truth the president but, says but, in that what, moment. But Michael, what price is that? Because if you see things like that, people are willing to just sort of overlook reality. Hasn't that created a real tension with how Americans are being asked to look at science that, and, and, and public yes. health and certain benchmarks, that that is somehow looked at as a, as a partisan issue, which you've said already, that's look like, if you believe in that, then you're on the Democratic side. Well, you know? And, and I'm, I'm interested in, 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 in how you unravel that or, or get it back to a healthy place so that we're talking not to Democratic Americans and Republican Americans, we're talking to all Americans about public safety. Well, you're not going to expect that from a political party. That's just not how that's going to play out. You're not going to have uh, the party going against its president. Um, we've seen too many times beforehand where a, a divergence was opportunistic and possible and they didn't, going back to Charlottesville, uh, and then any number of instances subsequent to that, including uh, what we've heard recently with respect to you know, detergents. Um, there was no pushback, and there won't be any pushback from the political establishment. Mm-hmm. And I wouldn't expect them so much to do that. What is expected, however, is other leadership, uh, the senatorial and congressional leadership, they do have the means because they're a separate branch of government. And just because the president is of your party doesn't mean, as we've seen uh, in the past, uh, both Republicans and Democrats have taken a position different from their, their presidential leadership, whether you know that president which was Richard Nixon or that president was Barack Obama in that span of time. I remember a lot of Republicans, given the Bush administration, the blues over positions that uh, the administration had taken on weapons of mass destruction or the war itself and the economy. You don't have any of that with Trump. And I don't know what magic elixir he put in their water that they have become almost zombie-like with respect to any response to his actions. 
But it does not serve the American public when that happens. They need the public, um, the public needs their elected officials to be and remain honest brokers, particularly mm -hmm. at a moment of crisis. Um, in watching the testimony with Dr. Fauci yesterday, um, you know, and listening to, uh, you know, you know, this plaintiff cry to open up the country from Rand Paul and others that, you know, somehow you, you, you're not an expert on everything. And Dr. Fauci had to respond, I've never said I was an expert on everything, but I am an expert on the stuff I know. <laughs> and that stuff is related to this virus. Um, I'm not advising you to make economic decisions. I'm advising you to make health decisions. Um, and so that's that is the that is the the difference here, and that is the expectation we, as the public, Steve, have of our elected officials, regardless of their party, uh, to set the partisan foolery aside, uh, and 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 to to pay attention to what the scientists and the researchers and the doctors and the medicine are telling us. We need to do at this time, and right. and injecting ourselves with detergent is not the prescription I think we need. One of the pool reports I get every day is on Joe Biden's fundraisers on Zoom and get a lot of them. What I'm not sure of is that Joe Biden is um, reaching out in a lot of ways. You know, this, this virus has basically locked him in his basement in Delaware. And he's trying to reach people. Critique the Biden campaign. Are they adapting to the moment or are they being confined by the moment? Both, both. They are confined by virtue of, this, of the fact that there's no no place to go. Uh, you can't have rallies. You can't you can't go greet people at a subway stop. So yeah, you're confined to a space, and they have adapted accordingly uh, by reaching out through Zoom and other media to to touch their base. Uh, the vice president is in an untenable situation in this in this moment because he does not command and control. Uh, the necessary uh, instruments of government mm. uh, where he can then speak to action and authority uh, and taking steps. He can only react like the rest of us in many instances to what the administration does or fails to do. And, and so that puts him in, in a somewhat limited box. Now, to the extent that he is limited by those circumstances, as we've seen, the public um, do still have high regard for him and his voice. So as polling is showing and other things that, um, yeah, he he is, uh, in contrast to the president, perceived to be a better leader on this issue, right. or would be a better leader on this issue is more correct uh, than what we see currently from the administration. That has frustrated Donald Trump, no doubt, uh, which we've seen reports recently where he's lashed out against right. uh, Brad Parscale's and his campaign team, and, and is uh, you know unnerved by the internal polling, which is leaking out, showing that he's losing across the board to Joe Biden. Uh, that has less to do with Joe Biden and more in in to do with how he's handled this and how right. the public has perceived and received his handling of this. Um, we're we're down the the last stretch. I've got two questions for you. Is sure. one. Um, you're in favor of mail-in ballots and of seeing it roll yes. out. I'd love to get the terrain where you think that will happen. I mean, we have you know, clock ticking and uh, that, those are things that need to get in place, whether that's a realistic uh, measure that we can put in place now or not, uh, what your, your, mm -hmm. your view of that is. And the second is, are the conventions gonna happen? Are the Republican and Democratic National Conventions gonna happen? So uh, give me your, your best at, at that and-, and uh, So and let, we'll let's, let's do on the scale of importance, uh, holding a convention, uh, mail-in ballots. The, of the two, the most important thing that the government must do and must be concerned about uh, is making sure that everyone has unfettered access to the ballot box come November. Irrespective of the current state of play, as Dr. Fauci has reiterated over and over again, we don't know where we will be, but what we do know is that when we get to the fall, we fully expect a reemergence of this virus, even if it scales downward over the summer, we expect a, a rescaling, a scale up in the fall. So governments, starting with the federal government, has to be serious about making sure we have access to the ballots this November. This election is not going to get postponed, folks. It is not going to be derailed. You can't sideline it. It is constitutionally mandated. So it will happen. How it happens matters. 
and the states need the resources to make sure that every American can cast their ballot for the candidate of their choice this November. And that means putting in place the resources and the infrastructure necessary to do that. The Congress has allocated under STEM 3 and the, the last stimulus package $400 million of a requested $4 billion. Please, when you're looking at ref, uh, the next level of financing and stimulus for, please meet the financial burden that the states have to meet in order to make sure the personnel, the infrastructure, and the ballots are there for voters to access. A convention can happen virtually. We can you know, watch it from our Zoom screens. Uh, we don't need to show up in a big hall and stand shoulder to shoulder in order to urge on our candidate of choice. We, however, must have that availability in terms of the ballot this November. We've got to allow for folks, particularly our seniors who are avid voters, they mm. love to vote, they love to participate. Um, and Republicans, note, that's your voter, by the way. Uh, so this idea that stay-at-home balloting is, is a canard or it's, it's corrupt or it's somehow cheating the system is just baloney. The president himself just received his absentee ballot, his stay-home ballot uh, from Florida a few weeks ago. So if it's good enough for the president to do it absentee, it's good enough for all Americans to be able to vote absentee this November. Well, Michael, um, thank you so much for joining us. You're a good friend. I look forward to seeing you in person one of these days when, when the crowds Absolutely. dissipate. Really appreciate you sharing Got your another hug thoughts with us today. You. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> and thank you all for joining me today. We'll see you tomorrow. I'm Steve Clemens. Be well.